Good morning and welcome to our Saturday support sessions. I am Liz Farron and I'm a clinical social worker, a senior consultant for Vital Work Life. And with me today is Dr. Simon Middle. Dr. Middle is a coach and consultant with Vital Work Life. He's also an internal medicine physician who's CEO of a practice that provides medical care and consultation to long-term care facilities. He has a master's degree in medical management and is, in my opinion, really a, a coach extraordinaire. Um, he does great work with individuals and leaders wanting to effectively navigate current challenges in the healthcare environment and to lead more fulfilling lives. So um, welcome, Dr. Middle. Really nice to have you with us today. Thanks, Liz. I appreciate the introduction. You bet. And uh, just a little bit about uh, Vital Work Life. We're a physician-focused national behavioral health consulting practice. We've been serving the healthcare industry since 2007, although our organization has been around for over 40 years. And our passion is really helping clinicians become their best selves. Infused through all of our solutions is our approach to well being, which is really based on the wheel of well being. It's, it's looking at the whole person and all of the various different parts of a person that can impact their well being. We also actually look at organizations in somewhat of a similar way, especially when we're consulting and trying to assist organizations. I want you to know that this webinar is being recorded and it'll be available to you on our YouTube channel. Um, and it lists how to prescribe to that, that uh, channel right here. Uh, we've designated time at the end for Q&A and if you use the question feature uh, uh, to submit questions at any time, we'll review questions and address them at the end. So thanks for that. I am going to, if you just give me a moment. Uh, again, bring, bring Dr. Middle and I back to really talk about, I think, um, some of these unprecedented, challenging and stressful times that we're experiencing, certainly with um, with COVID-19 uh, and, and that was initially when we started this the main thrust of why we were going to come together and talk. Now we have this increased awareness in our society of, of racial injustice and some of the corresponding social unrest on top of what, you know, was already a very challenging time. I guess I'm curious, Dr. Middle, what what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're experiencing around this. Yeah, it is unprecedented, right? We're, we are all, we even before COVID, we were already in this time where we saw a lot of healthcare really under a lot of stress. And the challenge even before we were starting to sort of add to that was, you know, how were healthcare's workers, physicians specifically, practitioners, how were they even aware of the amount of anxiety that they were carrying? And, you know, I know Vital has done a number of survey work around this that really demonstrates that there's fairly significant stress and burnout in, even prior to this. The addition of COVID has just sort of really elevated that because now we're not only impacting um, what we already were managing in healthcare, but now we've got this incredible amount of change. Right? How do we deliver care? How do we, you know, how do I learn the technology? Um, how do I talk with patients and their families about COVID or about the impact that they may have? Um, you know, what is the staffing situation in my clinic or in my hospital or my in my, uh, you know, my setting that may be impacting how I'm delivering care? So there's a lot of those pieces. Now on top of that, now we've got this social unrest, um, and I can tell you with what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing is you know, we have a lot of diversity within healthcare. And so now that's really coming to the forefront at a time when we're already under a lot of um, maybe scrutiny on how we're delivering care. Now there's this elevation of 
how am I actually interacting with my peers um, from different different ethnicities and different uh, genders and different you know ages and and there's sort of this heightened awareness that's sort of coming to the forefront which although not bad at the timing unfortunately is not perfect right and and so you know part of the question is how do we as individuals as organizations sort of step into this new place of okay I've already had a stressed and burned out uh, healthcare population uh, healthcare worker population now we've got this coronavirus, which is probably going to last for some time. This isn't going away anytime soon. And now I've got this, the social injustice piece that's really becoming aware. And what do I need to do about that? Um, and I think those are the things that I'm hearing is sort of this this multiplication of stress and anxiety as a result of the the impacts and, and the events that we're seeing today. You know, as I listen to you talk about that, what comes up for me is this, how do we talk to one another? How do we talk to one another? And that, if, you know, it that that's been out there, uh, especially within healthcare, and especially this idea of clinicians and leaders and administration. You know, how do we have conversations where we're really hearing and seeing each other? And maybe what I'm hearing from you is, yeah, it just kind of adds a heightened level. A heightened need probably to talk to one right. another right but a right. heightened level of maybe disconnect or awkwardness that might exist is that kind of yeah I, I think part of i mean you know we talk about communication a lot in healthcare right especially you know uh physician patient communication but one of the things i see as uh, you know over the last you know eight years as i've been coaching with with vital is you know the communication piece is is much more in depth than just the words I use, right? It's the tone, it's the body language, it's it's even the intent and and the perception of intent. And what am I actually trying to get across? And am I bringing judgments that I may not even be aware of into the course of that conversation? And you know what is that now doing in in, in impact? And we talk about that in the patient. Uh, physician relationship, but frankly, that's in all of the relationships we have. And so part of what I think is being elevated is how can we look at our own styles of communication and really challenge ourselves, right? Really challenge ourselves to say, am I bringing a judgment or an expectation that really may be um, unintended, maybe even not even just now coming to an awareness that I need to really think about. I really need to to challenge myself on and to be able to say, what would I what would I want to do differently here? And how can I take another approach or another step or how can I I, I ex, uh, work on that judgment or expectation in a way to release it and let go of it so that I can actually have a much more in-depth relationship with those around me, whether that's, again, my my peers or my patients, or, I mean, frankly, this impacts, you know, how we even relate at home, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's all of those pieces. So I think those are the things that when we talk about communication, I think it's a much more uh, in-depth um, concept. It, it, there's, there's more to it than just the words we use. Yeah, and, and you know, you're talking a lot about self-reflection. And I know you and I have talked uh, quite a bit about this idea that, I mean, that's so important for any number of things, particularly communication, because to make sure that you're sending the right message, sometimes we have to have a better sense of how we really feel, <laughs> what we really think, right? Right. Uh, especially in, in times where it's so fast paced and we're reacting and um, that that the the more we're self-aware uh, about our feelings and our needs and our intent, that really helps with communication. It also helps with well-being, right? And, and Absolutely. And, um, you know, I'd be interested in hearing you talk a little bit more about that whole piece where um, how, how does one, I know you've talked about clinicians kind of having their heads down and right. say more about that. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it's really, we're trained, right? As in healthcare, we're trained that the tasks we have are the work we do. And so what, what gets left out oftentimes in, in our training and frankly in the culture of healthcare work is how important the relationship is and how important self-care is. And we, we really lose sight of that. And, and um, there are a lot of systems that sort of push us into being 
production oriented or task oriented or or whatever it may be right um you know we're being graded on our productivity we're graded on our patient satisfaction we're graded on uh clinical outcomes and financial outcomes and so we're we've got all of these pressures and in that what ends up happening for a lot of us is because we're problem or you know we're we're problem solvers right at, at our core that's what we do as healthcare workers and so as practitioners and so you know our goal is always okay You've given me the task, I'm gonna figure out what to do with it, and then I'm gonna move forward. And so there really then becomes sort of this buildup of anxiety and stress over time because we're piling those on over and over again um, because it's not static, right? I mean, those expectations are additive and sometimes uh, uh, exponential. So, you know, I know in my own world, my own um, individual sort of journey, if you will, I've had to really work on how can I take moments to sort of step back and and how can I be less reactive and more responsive and so this idea of reactivity versus responsiveness becomes really important but the only way we can really do that is to step back right I have to be able to step back from the situation even for 30 seconds I mean and it doesn't necessarily take a lot of time to just take a deep breath to kind of center myself and then to be able to say okay what are the actual reality of what's going on rather than the reactions of those around me and how can I now be supportive, empathetic, and also problem solve. And and those are the pieces that I think sometimes get lost in um in healthcare because we're we're being pushed so hard to move forward. Um either an agenda or, or an outcome. Uh, and sometimes those other pieces get lost. And so again, you know, what are we doing in our free time? Um, what are we doing in terms of hobbies? What are we doing in terms of those moments, even during the day, to just take that that minute? And it doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, which is, I think, the other message I would, you know, kind of push forward here is start somewhere. You know, start in some place where you can just take a few moments to, you know, listen to some quiet music or, um, you know, we you know, do, just do a self-reflection moment or just even a check-in with yourself. Where am I? Am I feeling anxious? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling sad? Am I feeling angry? And then being able to take a moment to say, okay, now I'm going to move forward beyond this reactive, potentially reactive uh, place that I may be in. You know, um, just personally, I can say how important that is and how good it feels how good it feels when you actually take a moment and check in with yourself and and the clarity that comes from that, but also just the self-validation, right. right? Because I think it's so easy to want to just push all that down. Yep, Especially absolutely. The more complex it becomes, the more overwhelming it is. I think sometimes we turn away from it. We turn away from our feelings. We turn absolutely. away from um, from our our fear. We turn away from our sadness. We turn mm -hmm. away from our our sometimes sense of inadequacy, right? And to be able to not just validate that as that is actually what I what I'm feeling, but also to say it's normal, right? There's a normalization in, in that needs to happen with all of those things that says I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have the answer all the time. I don't have to. Um, figure out every single detail in this single moment there may be a timeline that I can I can I can add into that um, and, and I'll be honest I mean even my own journey I, and my, my wife is on uh, attending so I have to be real honest because she she helps me so much <laughs> she holds you. Uh, and she, she holds me to the fire a little bit which is great um, but I will tell you I mean I have struggled with this you know in in my career I mean this is not something that I I sit here and I've got this figured out I think it's something I continue to to step into and to grow into. And I think that is part of the journey for us in really whatever field we're in, but specifically in healthcare, because we tend to ignore those pieces. And I can tell you when in, in the coaching world, I mean, this is a lot of the work, right? A lot of the work is validation of feelings. It is normalizing them. It is taking a moment to how can I step back from the moment so I'm not so reactive and how can I now provide a more thoughtful response or a more 
uh, aligned response with my own values and with my, my own um, the person I want to be, right? Not just the person I am. And so those are some of the things I think become really important in our own self-reflections. Um, you know, and even taking a few moments at the end of the day and saying, just asking yourself, hmm, where was I maybe reactive versus responsive? And and what could I maybe have done a little differently there? Um, even those kinds of insights can can really be helpful in moving forward um, those, those ways of of interacting that can actually make significant impact in um, in clinical outcomes as well as in your own self be well being as well, and I think that's what's important. The the literature on this is is actually fairly extensive that really impacts you know productivity, you know financial outcomes, clinical outcomes, safety, um, you know your own personal health. I mean there's there's a lot of lot of data out there, and so again I think we need to to make sure we're we're approaching this from a side of this is this is good for you. This is good for your patients. This is good for us as an organization, and this is good for our community, right? And and so, how can we now sort of start putting those messages together? I've got a question for you uh, that's come up from from uh, one of our participants, and the question is, how can we reframe practitioners as problem solvers and move more into a strength based support? support person on a person's journey? That's a great question. I mean, it really is a very good question because I think it really has the insight of saying, you know, we are problem solvers and that we have other strengths, right? We have other characteristics that maybe aren't being being utilized to its fullest. And so I think it's a, it's a really great insightful question. So I think part of this is somewhat of an organizational culture question and partly of how do I self-empower myself, right? So how can I identify my own strengths um, and even my own challenge areas? And how do I step into those? And then within the organization, is the organization actually willing to do things that say, um, we recognize that you are more than just a problem-solving practitioner you have more to offer and now let's identify that and let's actually ask questions around how can we utilize that in um, in our practice, in our organization, in your day-to-day -day work, um, in the people you interact with. Um, and those that I think is, is an important question. So I think it's a multi-level, it, you know, it's an organizational question, is a sort of a management question. And then it's sort of the individual, how am I empowering myself to step into those areas? Yeah, you know, and, and I think about when you talk about leaders or administration, thinking about, oh, how can I tap into uh, the clinical expertise and perhaps the um, the staff management expertise mm -hmm. uh, of the clinicians in my group? I mean, there's so many wins in that, right? I mean, right. first of all, <laughs> you get to tap into a lot of wisdom. Right. Second of all, you get a ton of buy-in and improved relationships and improved engagement, which are all something. You know, it, it, it's a win for everybody, right? I mean, and and, yeah. and you know, it's interesting. I mean, I you know, I, I'll just give a quick example of, of a coaching session that I've had uh, that with with a, another person that said, you know, when that actually led to some changes in their role in the organization as a result of really saying but you have these strengths. You have the ability to do X, Y, and Z, and this is how that may impact. Um, and it may be a leadership role. It may not necessarily be a leadership role. It may just be a change in how I look at, at, at my world around me and now how, what, how do I offer that? And to your point, I mean, how valued is an individual when we can do that, right? How much value are we assigning to say, oh, you're, you can do other things. There are other impacts or other outcomes or other uh, influences that you may have. That I think can be really, really powerful in any organization. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, most organizations, um, most organizations, you know, put us as physician leaders into positions because we're good docs, right? And, and 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 which is great. I mean, and we need good docs and good positions here otherwise. But how do we then put? How do we help them learn how to be managers? How do we help them learn to be leaders? And and again, that's sort of part of that other organizational stuff. Yeah, for sure. I'm just going to check on. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. I can do this. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. When, well, this is kind of an interesting question. When anger and resentment become all consuming and unproductive, how do we shift? And maybe this is a little bit related to what you've just been talking about is sort of this looking at Am I am I a total victim here? Is there another way I can shift right. my perspective? I don't know. What is your thought about it? Well, and I think, you know, especially when we now have this layer of social injustice kind of overlying what's happening in not just in society, but within healthcare specifically, you know, the idea of am I a victim am, can can frankly can paralyze us, right? It can paralyze us into thinking that we're, we're, there's nothing more I can do. And so to some degree, we are all, um, you know, in, in all systems, there are, are things that we don't like about them, um, either the way they interact with us, the way that they communicate, whatever it might be. So that's a very, very universal thing. And so part of it is to say, yes, we might be in a system that doesn't necessarily work great um, and, and maybe not well at all. Uh, it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have an empowerment that we can embrace to move forward, to take steps. Now, they may not work, they may, may not happen as quickly as we want, right? And I think that's one of the challenges I can tell you as a, as, as a practitioner, we're always looking for so, sort of how do I make things happen quickly, right? Um, you know, and, and, and Liz, you and I have talked about my dad and working with him in, in his healthcare journey and, and even knowing healthcare, how hard that was, you know, all the barriers that were put up and how do I navigate this and all the different systems involved. And, and so the same thing is happening for, our, for, our, for us as practitioners, but also for our, our patients. Right, that's also what they're experiencing, and so the frustration you might be hearing from them is related to that. And so, one of the things that we need to really be, I think, more mindful of is we do have um, we have the opportunity to embrace the empowerment that we can take based on who we are as individuals. Uh, and a quick example: um, so you know, you may be the kind of person that is really good at process change or really good at communication skills, or really good at fill in the blank. Within your sphere of influence, you can still use those things. So you don't have to wait for somebody to empower you. You can empower yourself in those pieces. And so those are some of the things that I would encourage you know, all of us to really examine ourselves and ask that question about ourselves. You know, Where is my next place that I can be feel empowered? I can utilize the skills I'm aware of and I can, I can influence the setting I'm in around me. I like that a lot. Um, I think that along with that, recognizing one's own sources of power is this piece about trying not to get into all or nothing thinking yeah, about right. others because I think there there can be this tendency and I see how the media really fuels mm -hmm. it uh, mm -hmm. bad and good good you know good and evil and I think if so as a clinician if you think all administrators none of them know right. what they're talking about right 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 they don't right. really care about patients right all they care about is the bottom line um, and sort of all these vast generalizations um, that really don't serve us well. It right. doesn't serve the clinician well because it does leave you feeling pretty powerless and pretty cynical and, and discouraged. And it may be that you've come across uh, someone with those behaviors. First of all, you, you don't know for sure that your interpretation of the behaviors are is, is accurate. Um, but secondly, you don't necessarily, it's not helpful to ascribe that to everyone in that right. position. Or I wonder if you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, no, I mean, th this dualistic thinking is, is something that um, I can tell you, we at home have been talking a lot about. And so yeah. it's, it's been an, a fascinating sort of discussion um, over the last probably six months. And, and part of that uh, dualistic thinking is not, it, it really is around the stories that we've created in our head, right? Around based on our own experience, right? So, uh, you know, I, I can tell you in my own experience, right? I've had administrators that have just tried to squash me down in, trying, in terms of trying to make improvements. Now, I have, an, I have an option here. I can say all administrators are that way, mm -hmm. right? Or I have an, an option to say, 
okay, that is one administrator who has acted this way. Um, now, can I hold on to myself and still continue to be the person that I am and bring that forward to the next administrator I'm, I'm interacting with? The problem, of course, is if there's an ongoing pattern, then that pattern sort of solidifies the story. And there's there's a you know the idea of confirmation bias in this, right? So if I if I think that all administrators are bad, I'm going to look for evidence to confirm that that all all administrators are like that. So so you know even being aware of our own confirmation bias can be really a powerful piece in saying, okay, I do have this bias. I'm willing to put this aside because this is an individual person in front of me that I'm willing to develop the relationship with to to discover and be curious about how we can work together and not necessarily put a block up that says, I already know you, that you're not going to be able to work with me. Um, and that's true you know, even with patients, we can do that, right? So if we have a particular patient coming into us, and again, this I think raises this awareness of, of the some of the social injustice. Um, you know, we we in subtle ways and and oftentimes in unconscious ways will have this bias, and and that bias then leads us to um, unwittingly either be victimized or to victimize. And so again, we we have to be really really careful that we are aware of that as we move forward. Um, it is easy, um, it, the easy path is to, to feel like a victim. And, and the harder path is to say, I'm not a victim and I can empower myself. Those, that's a harder path, but it's actually a much more fulfilling path. It's a much more healthy path. And it actually has much more impact in the world around you in very, very positive ways. If we can, if we can address our own, own judgments, we, our own expectations, we can, we can put away our biases aside. And those are the things that, you know, I think in today's world, we are, we are being stretch to do that. And I think each of us has different capacities to do that, but I think the opportunity exists for us to have that kind of conversation now and saying, you know, when this particular type of patient comes in, here's what I think. Um, and, and I'll just, again, quick example. Um, you know, there was somebody I was coaching who really struggled with prescribing opiates, opiate medications. And, you know, that's a reasonable, a reasonable thing to have concern about. But to the point that anybody who came in with an opi uh, uh, opiate medication automatically was a drug seeker, right? And so it was that automatic piece that said, and then he was being told by his administration, well, you've got to take into account uh, patient satisfaction and you're getting complaints. And, and so now he's feeling victimized because he has, a, he has this bias and now he's getting this push down from his administrator. So it's it's again this very it's the system that is 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 getting the results it's designed to get right. I mean it it's going to get stressed out, anxious people rather than people who can hold on to themselves, be centered, and be responsive rather than reactive. I think I I, I think this is a great place for us to maybe wrap. Yeah. Um, because what I I feel like we're coming back to is we got to look towards ourselves. The thing that we have power and control over is us. Yes. And a lot of these things are happening around us um, that are creating stress and strain. And, and um, they're not going to change overnight, right? No. Uh, you no. know, and, 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 and it's going to be a long process. And how, and, how and do yet, we, taking the, yeah. be, you know, being willing to take that step, right? I mean, the first step yeah. is step you got to take and, 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 you know, you don't necessarily worry about all the steps, you worry about the next step. And that's, that's the place I that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And, and yeah. for people to consider, what is that for me? Exactly. What is that for me? Right. So right. that rather than uh, my being a victim of this process, whatever that might be during this very difficult time, um, where am I going to, what do I have power and control over here and how am I going to take care of myself here? Right. right. Um, so I'm going to, uh, Simon, just bring us, oh, hold on, oh, bear with me here. You know, you know, with as many times we're on some kind of video conference, we should be incredibly facile with this, and we're not. We all struggle not, with this still. I, we all struggle like, with it. <laughs> I just like totally lost my, uh, I don't know what you're seeing on your screen now. I just see us, so. Okay. Well, we're we're gonna finish off with just yep. us. <laughs> okay, and sounds good. Back, but what I am gonna say is that um, I, you know, we're we this as a reminder 
uh, this was videoed and you will be able to access it and go to our YouTube channel, Vital Work Life YouTube channel, and you'd be able to access this conversation that Dr. Middle and I have had. Um, you can reach us. I, uh, Dr. Middle, I'm gonna say what my email address is and perhaps you could say yours. Mine is uh, liz.farron, F as in Frank, E-R-R-O-N as in Nathan, at vitalworklife.com, liz.farron, uh, at vitalworklife.com and you, what would your preferred be for if anyone had any questions? Uh, yeah, so I did type my email. Um, I don't know if it went to everybody. It looks like it just went to panelists, but I will type my email in the chat. Okay. Um, and Excellent. so Thank you. Um, I think the my email is um, Simon Middle, S-I-M-O-N-M-I-T-T-A-L at yep envisage e-n-v-i-s-a-g-e hyphen health.com and yep, again so, i will and, and i see I, that Sarah Prom, our um uh, our senior director of solution delivery has put that in the chat box okay, good, thank you perfect. so much sarah and um also just a reminder that we will be meeting again next saturday at 10, 10 a.m central time and our coach will be barbara wingate who is a psychiatrist from the Philadelphia area, uh, and I'll bring that East Coast perspective that I think is really important yeah. to, to talking about uh, COVID-19. And uh, we look forward to, to connecting with you again. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you, Dr. Middle. Yeah, really absolutely. appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. To talk thank with you, Liz, you. and thanks everybody for joining us. Okay, bye-bye.